Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. So in the other two episodes of our series on exposure, we covered ISO and shutter speed. So today in our final episode on this series, we are going to look at aperture. So aperture is our third pillar of photography and by far, for me at least, the most interesting and the most important. Why do I say that? Well, Aperture controls both your exposure, so making your image lighter and darker, and it also controls your depth of field, which we'll explain to you shortly. In its simplest form, an aperture is essentially a opening in the middle of your lens through which light passes on its way to your camera sensor. Now, for me, the easiest way to explain this is to think of the human eye. Um, as you yourself go through daily life and you move into brighter and darker areas, your pupil in your eye goes bigger or smaller to allow in more or less light. And this is exactly the same thing that an aperture within your camera does. Um, it opens up wider, going bigger, to let in more light, to brighten up your exposure, or constricts, goes smaller, allows in less light, and thereby darkening your image. So now, the other and far more interesting function of aperture is to control depth of field. Now, depth of field is the portion of your image that is in sharp focus from the foreground to the background. Now, You'll see that some images have a very shallow depth of field, so where only a very small portion of the image is in focus, while other images have a large depth of field and you have focus throughout, from your foreground all the way to your background. Now, the smaller your aperture opening is, the deeper your depth of field is going to be. And on reverse, the larger your aperture opening, the shallower your depth of field. Now, a very deep depth of field could be very beneficial for landscape photography or architectural photography, where you want to capture detail throughout your image. On the other hand, a shallower depth of field could be a great choice for portraiture or macro photography, where you want just a little piece of your image in focus and thereby isolating your subject matter from the background. Now, let's discuss f-stop real quick. So generally speaking, when we talk about aperture, we speak about it in terms of a bigger aperture or a smaller aperture, but aperture is actually expressed in f-stops. Now your f-stop is written on your camera as basically an f with a number after it. And this is where you're going to start to pick up the problem. And this is also where most beginner photographers get quite confused with the concept. What you'll find is that a larger f-stop, so a f with a larger number after it, so f22 or something, actually refers to a smaller aperture opening. And the reverse is true. The smaller the number written after the f, um, the larger your aperture opening actually is. Now this is because f numbers or f-stops are actually fractions. And if you keep this in mind, you won't get confused with this concept. If you look at, for example, a aperture or a F number of F16, it is actually one over 16, so one sixteenth aperture opening. And a F number of F2 is one over two, or a half aperture opening. So there you can see how the reverse function actually works. So now that we've explained what it all is and what it does, let's show you guys how aperture actually works. We have our lens set to f1.2, so that's a very, very shallow depth of field and a very large aperture opening. The first camera in the sequence is perfectly sharp and in focus. Now the second one is, and the third one. So as you can see, this is perfect for separating your subject matter from the background. Okay, so now we have the lens aperture set at f16. And you can see the front camera is just about in focus, but the middle camera and the camera in the back, they are both perfectly sharp. So quite a contrast against what you saw when we had it set at f1.2. Now this is a much deeper field of focus. It is not as deep as you can go. Uh, many lenses can go up to f22 or even f32, and um, that will give you an extreme depth of focus throughout your image. Well guys, thank you very much for watching our short little video here on Aperture. I hope it helped. I hope you learned something from it. If you did enjoy that, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you very much.